Well, hey there, welcome to New Life Kids Online. My name's PC, thanks so much for joining us here today as we wrap up our series called Jonah. Wrapping up already? Yep, this one is a shorter series and we got a brand new one starting next week that we want you to join us for. But before we jump into our last episode, I got a question for you. What makes you mad? What makes you upset? Do you get upset when someone doesn't treat someone right? When someone takes the last cookie? What makes you upset? Yeah, those things would make me upset too. Well, today we're gonna learn about a time when Jonah got mad. And I don't think you're ever gonna guess why he got mad. It's gonna be a good one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's jump into our first video. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's me Mars, and I'm here to continue our series all about Jonah. I have a question for you. What makes you mad? I don't mean just a little bit mad. I mean what makes you angry and upset? I asked that same question to a few people. What makes you mad? I'll tell you what makes me mad when I'm sitting down to milk my cow and the silly thing kicks me right in the eye. That makes me mad. You know, I love lunchtime, but you know what makes me mad? When my peanut butter sandwich gets stuck to the roof of my mouth. It's stuck to the roof of my mouth. That makes me mad. And now for my dessert. <laughs> ah! Somebody took my ice cream. It makes me so mad. Wow, those people got really mad at some interesting things. In today's Bible story, Jonah got mad too. But he didn't get mad at ice cream, peanut butter, or cows. He got mad at God. Mad at God? What for? Good question. Even after being in the belly of the well, Jonah got mad at God for showing grace to the people in Nineveh. That's not the attitude we should have. We should be happy that God wants to show love and grace to others. After all, we received his grace. We should want others to receive it too. Well, I can't wait for you to learn all about this in your lesson today. The lesson's called, What Makes You Mad? Until next time, this is Damaris. See ya. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'm here to have a rockin' time teaching you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning about how we must have compassion for those who don't know God. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I gotta win the lost at any cost. At any cost? No way! That won't be easy or convenient for me. Maybe not, but God wants everyone to be saved. Wait, even my enemies? Uh, bullies? People that aren't like me? Yep, God can save anyone. You just have to be willing to share His love, even when it's not easy or convenient for you. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them, I gotta win the lost at any cost. And that right there is what you gotta know. I'm Wiggy Pop and I'll see you next time. Rock on! Hey kids, what time is it? Yay time! Hey New Life Kids, it's Pastor Devin and I'm back again. Have you guys been learning about Jonah? Jonah is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, so much so that I actually have a whale tattooed on my arm. Can you believe that? That's how much I love the story of Jonah. It's a great story and I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Hashtag fish tattoos, because we're trying to get people more fish, more whale tattoos. We need to get that going. But I know that you guys are excited. We're back for another week of games, and the game this week is called Spy the Lie. 
So what's gonna happen is we're going to throw three facts up on the screen. Two of those facts are true and one of those is a lie. And your job is to pick the lie. So you guys wanna play Spy the Lie? Let's do it, let's get into the first one. Okay, here's the three facts. Number one, someone once paid $10,000 for invisible artwork. Two, the small intestine, intestine? In I don't know if that's how you say it, but we're gonna roll with it. Is shorter than the large intestine. There's no way intestine. I think that's how you say it. And the third thing is the CIA tried to develop a group of spy cats. Okay. You pick one. I'm gonna go with number three. There is no way the CIA, a government agency, would use cats to spy on people. Let's see what the correct answer is. And it is number two, which is the small intestine is shorter than the large intestine. So someone once paid $10,000 for invisible artwork and the CIA uses cats to spy on people. So if you have a cat, you should get a dog instead. Next one. Okay, number one is there is 152 people in the United States of America that are named LOL. The second one is, the first pair of shoes was made from rabbit, maybe. And the third one is, is anatidaphobia, is a fear of being whacked by a duck. I am praying that is not the right one. Watched by a duck, not whacked. If a duck comes over to you and hits you over the side of the head, you should have no fear. It's being watched by a duck. Okay, I'm gonna guess number one is the lie. The lie is actually number two, which is the first pair of shoes was made from rabbit. I don't know what the first pair of shoes was made out of, but it is not rabbit, and I am not saying those other two ones because that other one is scary because it has a really long word. Okay, number three, the first fact is the Cookie Monster's real name is Billy. Billy Monster. Sorry if your name is Billy in here, you're not a monster, we love you. Number two is peanuts are used to make dynamite. And the third one is the tallest man ever was eight feet, 11 inches. Okay, I saw this one just now and I know exactly which one is the lie. It's number two. There is no way that dynamite is made from peanuts. I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich yesterday and it was not explosive at all. So I know for a fact it's number two. Are you kidding me? It is actually number one. Did you guys know that? The Cookie Monster's real name is Billy? That is not true. <laughs> because I forgot what the game was. But the first, that is not true. The other ones are correct. I am sorry, I messed that part up. The next lie, spy the lie, is this. One, the first one is the blob of toothpaste that sits on your toothbrush is called a nurdle. What? Number two, you have the same number of bones in your hand as in your feet. That one sounds like it makes sense. That sounds like the truth. And the third one is you are twice as likely to be killed by a vending machine than a shark. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say number three is the lie. There's no way sharks are gonna be likely to kill you, more likely to kill you than a vending machine. And I was wrong! The lie was that you have the same number of bones in your hands as in your feet. So if you're thinking about your toothpaste later and you're putting toothpaste on your toothbrush and you're brushing your teeth, the toothpaste that sits on your toothbrush is called a nurdle. So remember that. That's a quick fact for you to take to school tomorrow and to share with your friends. Okay, next up. Number one. Canada is south of Detroit. Number two. Dolly Parton once lost a Dolly Parton look-alike contest. Number three, octopuses have two hearts. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Because I know geography, because I'm an adult, and I've studied geography for many years, I'm gonna say, number one, Canada is south of Detroit is the lie. What? Are you kidding me? Number three is the lie. Guys, I am gonna be honest. I don't think I've gotten any of these right yet. But I'm trying my best, and I hope you guys are get, getting a better score than me. Next up, number one, a car engine can run on five-hour energy drink. Have you guys seen these little energy drinks? 
Somebody thinks a car engine can run on that? I don't know. Next one, polar bears have black skin. Underneath their fur, their skin is actually black? Maybe. And number three, a platypus does not have a stomach. Okay, I gotta go with number three again. That's gotta be the lie. Platypus, they need to have a stomach. And it's number one. A car engine can run on five hour energy? I don't think so. That's a lie. Polar bears and platypus, you guys are good to go. Number one, let's see it. Miss Piggy and Yoda are voiced by the same person. They're not real? I thought they were real. Oh, their voice actors are voiced by the same person. Maybe, that might be a lie. Secondly, the muscles in your fingers are stronger than your biceps. That's gotta be it. But let's get into number three. Number three, Princess Diana's funeral was watched by 2.5 billion people. I gotta say number two. I'm a pretty strong guy. My biceps are pretty strong. And guess what? So is my brain, cause I got that one right. That is a lie. Next up, number one, German chocolate cake was named after Sam German, who is actually an American. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Number two, Hawaiian pizza was actually created in Ontario, Canada. And number three, the first set of peeps had a horn like a unicorn. So they were called peeps. Those are the candy that we get at Easter every year, but they actually had a horn like a unicorn. I gotta say that one. Number three, there's no way that's true. And I'm right again, guys. I'm just flexing my muscles with my brain, my brain muscles, and I am just crushing it. I started out slow, but I'm feeling good right now, and I'm killing it. Next up, number one, the red outfit of Santa Claus was invented in Russia in 1831. Number two, humans cannot land on Saturn because it does not have a solid surface. And number three, 99.9% .9 of commercially grown artichokes are grown in one town in California. You know what? I'm gonna have to go with one because I'm pretty sure it was 1821 when Santa Claus was invented and I might be correct because that's three in a row, boys and girls, that I got right. Number one was the lie and I, again, am on fire right now. Number one, more people visit USA every year than any other country. Okay, okay. Number two, the term freelancers comes from the sword-wielding mercenaries. Ooh, interesting. And number three, the White House in Washington, D.C. has 35 bathrooms. Talk about options. 35 bathrooms in the White House? Mm, I'm gonna go with number three. There's no way there's that many bathrooms. It was actually number one was a lie. There, more people visit the US every year than any other country. That is not true. I'm not sure where they're visiting, but we are not number one on that list. Tiebreaker, okay, some of you got a few that wrong, some of you got a few right. I got a few in a row right, so I get double points for getting them in a row. That's just for me, not for you guys, but we need to do a tiebreaker. Are you guys ready? Here we go, number one. Mosquitoes are the deadliest animal in the world. Number two, the name of the longest city has 55 letters. And number three, half of the Earth's population watched the 2018 FIFA World Cup. I'm a big soccer fan, so I don't wanna say that one's a lie. I don't like mosquitoes, so I might pick that one. Yeah, let's do that. Number one, that's gotta be the lie. Number two, the longest name of the city of the longest name of a city has 55 letters. That is the lie because guess what kids? It actually has 88 letters. How insane is that? Well, that's it for game time today. I hope you guys have the great, great rest of your service. Enjoy this time of worship that you're going into and I will see you next time. Peace. It says to me, it tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how JSUS came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go! When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Oh, oh. I'm reading my.
my B I B L E, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S can down to us and gave his best. Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. God opens up the door when you ask. He cares when you seek. He's there when you knock, 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 knock. God opens up the door.
What a great time of worship together. Hopefully you got up off the couch, you sang along and worshiped God together with us. Well, right now it's time to jump into our last Bible story about Jonah. So we're going to give you 10 seconds to go get your fire bubbles. If you already have and you're ready to go, hang on just 10 more seconds. We'll jump into today's story. Here we go. Welcome back. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's jump into today's story. It's going to be in, once again, the book of Jonah, chapter 4, or page 1170 in your fire Bible. Let's jump in. When we last left Jonah, he had spent three days in the belly of a whale, and he had prayed to God for forgiveness. Then God gave him a second chance. God spoke to Jonah a second time and told him to go preach to the people of Nineveh. Rather than running away again, Jonah chose to obey and headed towards Nineveh. Jonah arrived at the city of Nineveh and preached to the people. He told them to turn from their evil ways, and he told them that if they didn't turn to God, that God was going to destroy their city. The people of Nineveh actually listened to Jonah and turned to God. Isn't that so awesome? The king of Nineveh told everyone in the city to repent of their sins and ask for God's forgiveness. And that's exactly what they did. Now you would think that Jonah would have been happy about this, but instead, Jonah got mad at the Ninevites for repenting from their sins. He knew that God was a forgiving God. God had forgiven him, so he knew that God was going to forgive them. But he thought the Ninevites deserved to be destroyed. Jonah went outside the city gates and sat on a hill to watch the city of Nineveh. He hoped that God would change his mind and destroy the city anyway. But God didn't. Suddenly the sun came out and began to make Jonah burn like crazy. So God caused a plant to sprout up and give Jonah some shade. Jonah went to sleep under the shade. When he woke up, Jonah saw that a worm had eaten through the root of the plant and the plant had died. Now Jonah had no shade. So Jonah got mad again. He got so mad that he asked God to take his life. He said, I would rather die than sit in this heat. Suddenly, God spoke to Jonah. God said, you are so angry about this plant even though you didn't water it or take care of it. You are also so angry about the worm that took away your shade but Nineveh is full of people who don't know me. Should I not be concerned about this great city? God was saying to Jonah, Jonah, you are mad about the wrong thing. How selfish are you that you care more about your shade and your comfort than about the souls of the people of Nineveh? Today in our lesson, we're learning just how important it is for us to win the lost at any cost. Wow, I'm just so excited today about um, an opportunity to pray with you guys because Jonah has taught us so much in this story, but actually really it's been God who's been teaching us all these things through Jonah and what he's done in Jonah's life. So if you guys just bow your heads with me just for a moment, I'm gonna pray with you. I'm so excited. Here we go. God, we are so grateful and so thankful for this day. We thank you, God, for this lesson on what makes us mad. Lord, if I just take a moment and think about uh, something that makes me mad or think about a person that has really made me bad, man, I probably would have never turned my life over to you because I would have been worried about what everybody else was thinking or how mad I was about that situation. Maybe for the children that are watching today, it's a bully at school. Perhaps it's that mean girl that talks badly about everyone. God, the boys and girls this morning might be thinking of someone who is in prison or someone who has, um, who's been doing drugs or has been mean to them or has uh, done wrong to their family. So many things, God, that we could think of um, and how there's no way that they would ever come to know Jesus and be a follower. Lord, I'm so grateful that you never, ever give up on us. You never gave up on Jonah. You told him to go to preach to Nineveh, and then he ran away. And But God, you always have a way of getting through to people. You put people in our lives or situations in our lives that we need your help or we need others' help. And sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it's trouble. Other times it's... Sometimes it's just a family member who just needs our love and we don't really want to be kind to them because they haven't been kind to us. But God, help us to remember today that you can save anyone. You 
alone can save anyone. Just like the people of Nineveh, when they turned their lives over to you, you saved them. Just like Jonah, when he was thrown off the boat, you saved him. God, would you also help us today to remember that we must care more about the lost than even our own comfort? Too often, we are just like Jonah. We care more about ourselves and our own comfort than we do about those who are lost without Jesus. We say things like, I don't think I can talk to them about God. I'm not sure what to say. Or, I'm too embarrassed to share Jesus with my friends. We are more concerned about our own comfort than we are about those who really need to know who Jesus is and how much you love him. It should not be this way. We must do whatever it takes to win the lost. Because here's what else I know, God, that you want everyone to be saved. Lord, you sent your only son, Jesus, to live a sinless life on earth. That means he never messed up. He never made a mistake. Then Jesus paid the price for all of our sins on that wooden rugged cross. That's right. Jesus, you paid that price of death so that everyone in the entire world would have an opportunity to know Jesus. See, the thing is, is that, Lord, you could have said, ah, no way. I'm not giving my life for those selfish people. They've sinned against my father. They've messed up. They should die. But that's not what you did. That's not what you said. Instead, you chose to take our place on that cross and pay the price with your own death so that our sins could be forgiven. Man, today, God, I realize that you really love us, that you really want everyone to be saved so that we can spend eternity forever in heaven. So God, we give you thanks and we give you praise today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. I pray, Lord, that you would help these boys and girls to understand that you love them, that you care about them, you have a plan for their lives, and you are waiting to be their forever friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can call me Jazzy. Welcome to the Jazzerverse. It's time to talk about the two loves of my life, the Powerverse and Jazzercise. The Powerverse is the best way to get your heart right, and Jazzercise is the best way to get your heart healthy. First, let me introduce you to the Powerverse. Today's Powerverse says, the Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3, 9. That was a super fun power verse that you and I need to remember always. And the best way to exercise your memory is to exercise your legs. Come on, Heath, let's pump up the jam so the boys and girls can get their heart pumping. This time, we're going to say the power verse together. So I need you to stand up and do today's dance move while you say it. Today, we're running in place. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready to get your jazzercise on? Lots of energy, kids. Say it with me on the count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Second Peter 3, 9. Wow, that was super. Are you feeling that? Woo! feels great. I want you to keep up the good work. We'll see you next time here at the Jazzerverse. Wow. All right, here we are wrapping up the final piece of this three-week series on Jonah. And can you believe it that Jonah actually gets mad? He disobeys God. God saves him puts him back at Nineveh, he tells the people about Jesus and how they ought to repent, and then he gets mad at them because they don't do it exactly the way that he thought they should do it. 
Man, imagine if God got mad at Jonah for what he did. Instead, God loved Jonah. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to just take a few minutes with your family and just talk today about the story of Jonah and maybe how you might react when someone doesn't exactly do things the way that you'd want them done. But always remembering that God has a plan and that his plan will succeed. So get together and chat with your family in a little bit of debrief time. Here we go.